Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome to this week's video. Just before we get into today's video, I'd like to just go over something quick. Um, we're almost at 500 subscribers, so to all those that have already subscribed, I can't thank you enough. Thank you. Um, you know, one day that was zero, and now we're at 485. And we're slowly growing, and we're slowly growing. I'm hoping to get to a thousand by the end of the year. That's a bit of a dream, nice goal to get to. Um, but if we can get to 500 before then, that'd be great. So I don't want to really dwell on that too much. But if you've not subscribed and you like what you see, please consider subscribing. So then we're one step closer to hitting that goal. Thank you. Right. So what we're going to cover in today's video. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to cover some camera shake. Now, this has been uh, so, uh, this has been mentioned in one of the previous videos that I've done. Um, how to give a game a bit more feel. Um, how when you shoot a weapon, you get a bit more of feedback, a bit more of like um, a bit more energy behind it, so it feels a little bit weightier. Now, um, this is just a little project that I've been working on. Um, so, you know, just. Just ignore the actual scenery itself but if i get into this area here um when we fire you can see that there's just a subtle bit of movement behind the camera where the camera kind of wiggles just a little bit when we're firing so if you keep firing you get this kind of shuffle and this wiggle um instead of the the whole screen just staying completely stationary and um, when we fire that little bit of movement just adds a tiny bit more life um to the actual game it gives it a bit more feel like the weapons actually doing something um, and it's actually really simple to set up so without further ado let's just jump straight into it okay so let's get this built out now so this is like i said this is actually really simple to set up um, it doesn't take much um, modification it essentially just takes one blueprint node and just for you to set up a blueprint class um, which is really simple uh, just to tell the system how it should shake the camera so let's let's just jump into the first person character to start with um just to explain the blueprint node that we're going to need to add uh, and then we'll work on to the actual um the actual camera shake blueprint itself um because i'll take a bit more explaining so let's just get straight into the first person character. So obviously, in my, let me just explain. In my game, um, I've got a first person set up here. And as you can see, I've disabled the camera shake now. So when we're shooting, absolutely no movement happening whatsoever. We're as plain as, as it could be. We've just got the basic idle animation of the, of the, of the character. So um, we've not affected anything there. So the camera is essentially attached to my arms and that's that's what creates the first person shooter style. So opening up my first person shooter template here, I've got the spawn projectile uh, blueprint, which is quite standard, um, not really modified in any way. Um, and then at the end of it here, we've got a play, play sound at location. And I've just added one extra um, report noise event onto here. However, this isn't um, this isn't a part of this tutorial, so really you can just ignore this one. This doesn't make any difference to the camera shake at all. This is just something else that's within this project. So at any point after your spawn projectile, so essentially if you're if you've got a line trace game, at the end of your line trace. Uh, you just want to add the camera shake at the end of your fire or it could go in between it doesn't really matter just at some point within the blueprint action of firing you want to add this in there but just for the sake of simplicity i'm going to add this to the end and what we want to do is we just want a play um we type in camera there we go play world camera shake and it's as simple as that really now that requires a shake class. Now I've set up a weapon fire camera shake. There are a couple of um, sort of default ones or base classes, um, but we're going to override one of these. So then we've got our our own. Um, I'm not too sure if these have just got default values and if they actually do anything. Um, but you could have a play with those, I guess. I've just always made my own over the top. Um, then the, the needs an epicenter. Essentially, this is just a location of where it's going to play the shake from. Um, now, actually, I've probably I've probably explained that the wrong way. 
Um, the epicenter is is basically almost like a start location of the area it should look for cameras in. So what I'm actually going to do is there's a get actor location here for the play sound. To be honest, I don't think that play sounds in there by default. I may have added that. So I do apologize, actually. Um, let's skip that as well. Um, <laughs> let's just throw me a little bit. I do apologize. Let's just start again. So in the in the play world camera shake, the epicenter is sort of the lo well the location to place the effect in the world. Now, from this epicenter, we set up a radius um, of where we should look for cameras to apply shake to. Now, we're going to keep that as small as we possibly can. Then it only affects our camera. Um, so then if any players run past really close to us, they're not going to get affected by it too. Um, so really, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that epicenter to be get. Um, it's going to be actor, get actor location. So really we're saying let's start this effect from where we are stood and really we don't want an inner radius um we're going to set this to zero uh, just so then it, it it really only does an outer radius and we're going to just keep that really 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 small the outer radius i found works at 150. you could probably narrow this down it depends how you've got your camera set up mine's pretty much just plain and basic where the see my actors sort of center is here so up to about here is like 95 so you can get away with it by saying 100 but if you've moved your camera back a little bit it's going to go from here to here so you just kind of need to work out the distance um, 200 is a good coverage but if if in your game you've noticed that it's affecting people around you just lower this down like I said, I think we can get away with this with 100, but I'm just going to do 150 just to play it safe. Hey guys, just a little segue here. As I was editing this, I just realized you could probably use the camera location as well. Uh, this would be able to reduce the radius down quite significantly. Um, to do that, what you'd probably do in your hierarchy on the left, or sorry, your components on the left, um, that's where your mesh is and your gun and stuff like that. You could drag over the camera uh, and drag off that and get the world location of your camera and then you can set that as your epicenter your outer radius then would be able to be reduced down to something like 10 or maybe 50 um you'll have to play with this as i didn't cover this in the video but um that should reduce the potential of interference but anyway we're going to continue on with the actor location hope you enjoy the fall off as well the fall off is just how much that it it sort of fades out towards the edge of this uh, radius um, which I'm just gonna leave it to one because it's the default and I don't fi I don't find it makes that much of a difference but just so you're aware of it, it it just sort of feathers the the edge out so as you get to this 150 mark how much it affects cameras at the 150 mark is going to be very very minimal and so anyone that's in the closer range of that 150 is going to feel it greater and anyone right on the edge of that which is good because if anyone does just skim past you they're not gonna see their camera shake and that's just the way that this node's set up unfortunately so back again now we need a shake so um although i've still got mine we're just going to create a new one so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to my first person blueprint folder you can see my camera shake here and the parent class here is manatee camera shake so we're just going to create a new one of those so right click in your content browser go to blueprint class and in the all classes which may be uh, collapsed like this if you just click on this little down arrow it'll drop down and you want to look for shake and that should bring up all the shakes but the one that you want is camera shake base and then manatee camera shake you select that that'll that'll place that here down at the bottom and it's wanting a name so I'm just going to put this as new camera shake um, weapon fire Ooh. weapon fire there we go and then what I'm going to do I'm going to double click that and we're going to get into it now although that this is a blueprint um, I'm not going to use the event graph whatsoever 
everything that I'm going to do is going to be set up here. But um, you can have your event graph uh, set up in such a way that depending on the weapon your character is equipped, it may change these values that we're about to set. Um, so if you're using a shotgun, you might get a really large movement. And if you're using a pistol, you're going to get a really small movement. Um, that's just food for thought. That's not going to be covered in this video. But that's just a reason why you'd want to use the event graph. Um, after a while, the this if you don't use the event graph, this blueprint typically converts itself to a data only, uh, which you'll mainly only see um, see these, which is fine. So let's get into it a little bit. So at the moment, um, we've got a couple of things. There's quite a lot of things here. I'm just going to minimize these so we can talk through them um, one by one. So first and foremost, you've got the um oscillation duration now if this is set to zero it doesn't really do anything if you set it to what was it so yeah zero means that it doesn't do anything and, and this is basically how long the shake is gonna sort of apply for now because this is weapon fire um you want it to be quite immediate and you, you want it to be over quite quickly um because i think if you fire a shot and the camera's still shaking a second after you've shot the bullet something's quite wrong um you for it to be more realistic you want the oscillation to apply really quickly and you want it to end really quickly so like you've you've taken that recoil of the weapon and you know you 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 back stood up ready to fire the next shot type thing so Really what I find the duration being is like 0 0.2 of a second, just so that it's over really quickly. Um, I will set it higher in just a minute. Let's just get it set up so it's nicely. And then what I'll do is I will over exaggerate these numbers just so you can see what kind of effect they have. But I'm gonna build this out slowly into something that's um, typical for what I, um, how I would set it up. So then we've got blend time. So that's really how well that's going to blend into what the camera is regularly to how it's oscillating. So really you want that somewhere in between your duration just so then it smoothly transitions between them. Um, but again for, for, for camera, uh, for camera, for, for weapon fire, the defaults settings here have always worked quite nicely for me. And again, the blend out time is you know, similar, but it's the opposite to blend in time. So, these ones you just get to fit around with, they're just how long, really, the shake is going to apply for. Now, what's really interesting is what movement we're going to introduce to create the shake. Now, this is where it's great. This is where we get a couple of options. So, if you forget about the word oscillation, really, here is rot, which is rotation, and you've got lock, which is location. So during this camera shake, how much do we rotate and how much do we move? There is also a field of view. Um, I don't play around with this one too much because it can have a kind of sickish feeling to it. Um, if the field of view is changing while you're shooting gun, it doesn't do your head very good. You can have a play around with it. You can see the effect that it does, but just a word of warning: it does. It, just, it is a bit jarring to 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 see in this kind of um, application, really. And also another note on the location: um, if you start moving too much, um, that can also be quite sickening. Really, I only use the Y, so we're going side to side because up and down. And backwards and forwards doesn't really give this much of a feel but we'll get into that um so let's start with rotation um so you've got your pitch yaw and roll now if you're unfamiliar with which direction these are going to be in if you go back to your first person character and go to your viewport and let's just pick the um <laughs> i forgot everything all the names the the mesh and then if you go up to location, if you hover over these um, values, 
I'm sure it used to say. No, oh, that's a nice. Well, that's that's really ruined that for me. I was ex oh there we go. So here I was over location. That's why. If you hover over the rotation sort of labels, so X is your roll and Y is your pitch, and Z is your yaw. If we was to actually select the camera and select rotate, because we're going to be affecting the rotations, if you want to affect the roll, we're going to be hear these. We're going to be rolling the camera like that. Now, when you're firing a gun, I don't think we're going to be doing that that much. So roll is probably something you're not going to be doing, because um, I can't imagine shooting a weapon is going to need you to to roll from uh, left to right. Uh, pitch. So that's up and down. You're probably going to get some minor movement on that where the gun's throwing you a little bit. And also the uh, the Z where the gun might go side to side. The, obviously these are moving at 10 unit increments. This is very extreme. We're probably not going to do that, but we might move in 0.1s, 0.2s, or even up to 1s and 2s. Um, but that, that, again, that's all up to you. And then before we actually transition back to the, the camera shake, uh, location as well. You've got your X, your Y, and your Z. Um, I'm really only ever going to move um, side to side just a smidgy, smidgy bit, just to give that a bit of a wobble feeling. Um, whereas up and down, I don't really mess with up and down um, and forwards and backwards because it feels a bit jarring. But you could, you're more likely to move the weapon than you are to move backwards and forwards. But I guess you could do that. I guess you could do that. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say no because I don't know your game. I don't know how um, your look and feel. But yeah, let's get into it. So let's just chuck in some figures here. So for me, for uh, the pitch, I'm actually gonna do uh, an amplitude of one, and I'm gonna set a frequency to ten. Now you can just blindly follow my numbers here because what I'm gonna do in just a second is I'm gonna play this, and you're gonna see the effects it has, and then we'll play with the numbers and you can see what difference that's going to have so i've just changed the pitch and yaw so just to jump back in here select the camera select rotation i've got to go for the y and the z yeah so i'm going to go oh that's roll i'm going to go up and down and i'm going to swing west to right obviously that was 10 units each i'm only going to go really one um with a frequency of 10 so that's like um that's like a quick jitter uh, which you'll you'll see in just a second um and i tell you what let's let's play that before we play with the location and you'll see what effect that's going to have so really it's going to modify the pitch and yaw by only about one unit or so over a duration of 0.2 seconds so it's going to be really quick um let's press play and let's have a look so before we do that we, we've now saved that and compiled it let's go back to the event graph of our character and we just need to change the shake now to our new camera shake weapon fire that's the one we just made and then because we've got our radius filled in uh, this should apply nicely so let's press play and because it's so subtle you might not be able to see it but that camera is definitely moving there if I was to remove this line and press play, you can see now we've got absolutely no movement whatsoever. And then let's reconnect this, press play. You can see now that the scene is shaking just that little bit, and that might just be enough to give a bit of movement. So with this open, let me increase that duration now so you can see what kind of effect that has. So if I set this duration by 10 times, so now it's two seconds. Now that's really long for a camera shake. If I press fire now, that was a single shot and you can see after two seconds it stopped wobbling. So you can see how that will probably get disorientating because it doesn't feel natural for a single shot. Why is the camera still moving now? So, if we reduce that down to a second, you'll see that that still is a little bit too long. The, the, the shot is well over and done with. 0 0.1 might be a bit too short. 
it's there, but I don't think there's enough to for you to notice. Um, let's go to 0 0.3. That doesn't feel too bad. I might use that for a heavy weapon, but for me, a nice sweet spot is 0 0.2. It's quick, it's sharp, it's over when you think it should be, um, and that's what I like. So let's move down now to the uh, amplitude of the yaw and the pitch. If we set the amplitude to 100, um, this is a big jump. You can see there that it's throwing us up and down quite madly there. Um, let's knock it down to 50. Again, this is still going to be quite a shunt. Let's set it to 2, which is a bit more realistic. You've got it. So now we're only moving like 2 degrees either way. And I think because obviously you're only reacting to a bullet fire, um, smaller numbers are actually probably better because they're not going to give your user a sick feeling from playing your game. Too much movement just from a bullet fire is, is, is doesn't make me feel great, so I can't imagine... For a lot of players, that's going to make you feel great. So let's keep the numbers down. If I was to set this to 1 as it was before and set the frequency to 50, I don't really think you're going to see a great deal of difference. It looks a bit more jittery because it's it's trying to fit 50 of them one unit movements into that 0.2 seconds. So the amplitudes, you can really think of that as um, how much do you want to move by? And then the frequency is how much of that distance do you want to try and squeeze into your duration? So 10 micro movements of one unit for me is fine over 0.2 seconds. Uh, and, and you'll really balance that duration and the frequency between them all. So just to add a bit more to it, I'm just going to add a bit of location. Now I'm not going to move the X or the Z. I'm going to move the Y. Because that one is going to be like a slight left or right feeling. I don't really want to go backwards and forwards. I guess let's try backwards and forwards. Um, I'm going to show you this one first. So again, I'm just going to go with one unit. And I'm going to go with a frequency of 10. Let's hit compile and let's press play. So the, the camera's just ever so slightly nudging back. Um, sorry, to, to the left or right. If you did want to add in that backwards and forwards, we want to add in an X. Let's add, let's, let's set this to 5 and frequency of 10. Don't want to go too crazy. I don't know if I, I don't know if I like that. I guess that's okay. The only thing I don't like is obviously when I'm moving backwards and forwards with with the camera at a fire moving backwards and forwards as well for me doesn't feel too great. But um, everybody's different. I'm gonna leave that set to zero. So all I'm gonna have is the Y. And for me, this feels quite natural. This feels quite natural now. I can get up these stirs here, get in here. And I've got a nice camera shake. Okay, did I miss anything out? I don't think I did. So there are other things. There are some other bits and pieces that you can mess around with. So, an initial offset is if essentially when you press fire, it can start already slightly skewed, which that means that it'll transition back towards a normal position, or it'll do the it'll do the opposite. Um, I typically leave it on random. I don't I don't really see that much different from going from zero. If I just track these to zero, I don't really. I don't, there isn't really a difference, I don't think, except it, it's going from the center outwards, whereas 
with the random it could start from the out and come back in um which to me i think is better because you get a you get a bit more of a at these at these low numbers you don't really notice it but you get more of a more of a whip because it's it's rushing to a, a random location quick um wave format now purling noise never used it um i don't really know a good way to explain it a sine wave when you talk about oscillation i can't really draw it but um actually could i one sec let me let me try something let's get that and let's just i just need any node really um get a loop okay this is going to be the worst explanation ever so please wait with me um i'm gonna get another lerp just because i'm i'm absolutely terrible i don't know what i'm doing right you know what? scrap that i'm not gonna i'm not gonna try if just really break basically um a sine wave really is like a, a nice smooth up and down i, I was gonna tr I, I was hoping that i could use this as a as an example but i i really can't um let me see if i can quickly google it sine wave <laughs> yeah all right <laughs> right this this is what i was going to attempt to do in blueprints um this is slightly out of my plan from from what i planned to record but yeah so a sine wave is just a nice smooth let's so if we think about this in terms of the camera movement we're going to go from where the camera should be to where we're saying let's move it to and then we're going to move back to um a rig what am i doing here <laughs> yeah we're going to go from a normal position to that one unit out of the way then we're going to slowly and smoothly smoothly being the optimum optimal word there transition back to a normal position which then then we're going to carry on going and go to another position and and this is how the this is basically oscillation where it goes from a value to another value to another value to another value and it's really neat it's it's nice and smooth so it's not going to throw you all over the place now if we were then to say swap this to purling noise um that looks like a bit of a mess so again i've not really used this in all, all in the camera shake so i'm probably speaking out of my depth here but i've lost all my data now i set it default class. there we go uh, class defaults if we were to set this to purling noise i'm going to expect this to be a little bit more sketchy and random that's that's really the best way I'm going to be able to explain this. But if we compile this, because of our numbers are quite low. See, that looks a little bit more jittery to me. I guess that would probably be more obvious if the numbers were higher. So for hours, it's probably not going to make that much of a difference. Before I start getting completely more out of my depth than I am, um, because the waveform I have, I've never changed, I've never needed to change. Sine wave, nice and smooth, everything's as you expect it to be. Just stick with it, but play around, by all means play around. There are some other bits and pieces down at the bottom, single instance, whether you want it to play just once and stuff like that. Animation shake, which I've, I've again, I've never used, um, so I can't really advise you on this at all. Um, I'm not even going to bother. And to be honest, that's really it. I hope that helps you to make a camera shake. I've definitely took too long to explain all that. If I did give you enough information, if I did give you enough detail, please consider giving me a like. Please leave a comment down below and give me some feedback. I love it. Um, if you like watching this type of video and if you thought it was useful and helpful, please consider subscribing. We're still trying to hit reach that 500 mark. But then to eventually hit hit the year end goal of a thousand that'd be amazing and i can only do it with your help so if you're already subscribed super thank you for you um, if you've not subscribed thank you for watching to this end
but please consider subscribing if you liked it. With all that being said, you can contact me now on Discord. Um, the server link will be down in the description. And I do have a few other social links down there if you've got uh, another way that you'd prefer to contact me. With that being said, I really need a drink now, so I'm going to leave this where it is. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in next week's video.